Welcome to the Orange Cactus Coffee Podcast with Mike Kincaid and Jake Goebel. Join them as they experience specialty coffee and document their journey. These friends explore roasts and roasting methods, brewing equipment and techniques, and review the cafes they visit along the way. Thanks, Brioni, and thank you for joining us for episode 51 of the Orange Cactus Coffee Podcast. Happy to be in your ear. Happy to be with you. Mike and I talk about drop coffee in this one. Uh, we talk about the mocha pot device that uh, I got and started experimenting with. Talk about our coffee experiences down at uh, Chick-fil-A, Elevate, and Desert Eagle Coffee. And then also kind of talk about the Zen Roast device, which you can use to roast coffee at home. Home, and we give you kind of a business update for Orange Cactus Coffee and the direction that we think we're heading in and that we want to go in. Hope you enjoy it. It's an honor to be with you. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Well, I don't know about that, but I wish I would have recorded it. So we are live. Okay, we're not live, but I'm Jake Goble. I'm sitting here with Mike Kincaid, and you have stumbled across episode 51 of the Orange Cactus Coffee Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for hanging with us. Thanks for kicking it with us. We are kicking it, hanging out, drinking some coffee. We got done drinking a whole lot of coffee, probably a little more coffee than I normally do, and I'm sipping on the last bit of this Bolivian from Drop Coffee that yeah. John sent over to us. And as I break straight into this coffee review here, the drop coffee was very good. It was excellent. It's been very, Some very of my good. Favorite coffee that I've had. Just uh, each one. We had the Ethiopian, the Kenyan, the Bolivian, and the Colombian. Colombian. Yeah. And all of them were a little different. Um, but they were all very flavorful, very they were a little light. It's crazy. That style of roasting is so light. Like yeah. when you look at the beans, just the color on them, right? Yeah. It's just, yeah. there's light and then there's Norwegian coffee. Yeah. You know, at least currently. Right. Sim similar to how Tim roasts too. Yeah. When yeah. we've gotten Finca Tamana in the past. But um, excellent. The sweetness was there. Um, yeah. There was, you know, a few of them had, you know, since it's so light, the kind of grassy, little earthy. Did you get some of that? Tones in a few more, yeah. like the Kenyans. But it's not very strong. Right. And it's quickly followed by an awesome amount of sweetness that in my mind makes it just an enjoyable cup. The only problem that I had was I had to change my grinding technique because if I threw all the beans in there and just turned the grinder on, it would jam each and every time. That was the, the bottom. The bottom was jamming Locked each and up. every time. Yeah. So that little pop you heard was Mike moving a, an orange cactus coffee ball cap. This is a flex fit, small medium. Why am I telling you what's sitting in front of us on this desk? It's because we have video. We've got video. So far, the feedback has been great. Keep it coming. If you enjoy the video versions of the podcast, let us know so we can keep doing it, keep providing that for you. If you get tired of it, let us know. That way we can put our energies into something different for you. Yes. Something else. So then you get to see Mike running. Yep. Run away, Mike. Run away from the, 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 the table here. Anyhow, from the desk. So the other thing that I wanted to bring up that the yeah. missus actually picked up, and it's part of a broader conversation that, that comes in as the brew tip of the week. And maybe I'll just, I'll just take over. I'm just going to dominate the show. And you just jump in whenever I'm talking go? to you. I'm You're just going to go. go. Right. I'm just going to go. I'll check so out. Go the, for it. So the brew tip of the week is to use Stumptown's guides. I know oh, that yeah. sounds crazy, but um, the missus was out brew guy. shopping at Bed Bath & Beyond and picked up a mocha Love pot. Love that store. I brought it up, I think, in the Daily Ristretto or one of the other shows. I don't remember. I think I've talked about it before. The missus was out. She sent me text pictures and she's like, do you want one of these? Yes. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And then she's like, do you, and I asked her, can you pick up a hand frother as well? Did they have that there too? And I sent her a picture of what one would look like because she's like, what the blazes are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. And they had actually had that a couple different types of frothers. One was like a milk steamer. Like it was a, a heated device that just warms the milk. And I'm like, no, nah, that's not what I want. And it's too expensive. So the, mm. the mocha pot was 30 bucks. Not bad. And then what we found was a little press. You know, you, it's a, it looks like a French press. It's a small glass cylinder. Yeah, a little narrower. And it has a marking on it, how far, how 
far you can fill it up with milk. It's in the bottom of the container. And then there's a plunger that goes down into this oh, metal nice. cylinder. This plunger has two plastic rings around it. Okay. And those rings are separated by about an inch. And they have, they're crisscrossed inside. Crisscrossed? With, with plastic screens. Oh, like a mesh screen? Like a mesh screen. Yeah. And so you, you take that and you, you go up and down with it. You pump it. Mm-hmm. And it froths the milk. Frothes the milk. It's all the same principle. It's the same principle. Introducing air. So oxygen. Oxygen into the milk, and yep. that causes froth to occur. A little bit of foam. A little bit of foam. So she picked both of those up, and I was excited to try them. What was them. the frother? Do you know? Uh, 20 bucks. So 20. 50 bucks total. 50 bucks. 50 bucks total. Okay. I went out to the um, the next day. I went. Actually, I'm sorry. The first time I tried it, I made a cortado. So we I made the mocha pot. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me back up a minute. So I tried the mocha pot. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? And in the back of my v- mind, Mike's voice is coming in and be like, "Bro, you have a phone. Use the YouTube. Use the Google." Yeah. Because I was going to text you at you know five o'clock in the morning. And be like, dude, do you know how to use a mocha pot? And then Mike would be like, use your phone. I'll send you a link. Use your phone. So I jumped in there, Mocha Pot. First page search results on the Google was Stumptown. Yeah. I was like, Stumptown is a name that I trust. So I jumped on the guide. And it was great. I used it. I made a cortado with it. Was so, it a video? They have no, both. I don't want to watch them. No, I don't want to watch no videos. Yeah. I want there. They may have been videos, but I didn't click on no, no there's videos. There's a time and place for both. There's a time and a place for both, but I want to just see a little guide. Yeah, a little, a little online step by guide. Step. A little step by step. Yeah. Step one, and their guide was phenomenal. Phenomenal. It's it was good. just perfect. Yeah. Check it out if you haven't. Stumptown is full of great stuff. They really are a lot of good resources, and their videos. I will just say are pretty interesting. They've tried to mix it up on how they do it if you ever watch some of their like their aero press they're actually out in the middle of the woods filming it that's funny like you know you're camping but it's done well you know what i mean good high production quality yeah it really and is and entertaining good at sound the same time. yeah perfect good Love music it. i mean they've even done um videos where i don't know the brew time is really long like 10 minutes but they let the video run the entire 10 minutes and they're playing like a a, a music video that's funny. And then you, you could fast forward, obviously, or you could just chill and enjoy the music. Watch the, yeah, watch and the music And then you come video. back and they're like, okay, it's done. Let's finish it up. Let's finish this uh, puppy up. So that's cool. It's creative. That's very cool. Yeah. Because I had questions. How fine do you grind your... How fine? How fine do you grind the how coffee? How fine do you go? Well, you just what go regular say? drip. Regular drip. Oh, really? They grind. didn't say fine enough? Not super fine. You don't fine want super fine. Up. Yep. Super fine. How do you fill it? Do you tamp it? What do you do with the where the coffee goes? Yeah. It's like, nope, just mound. Put it in. Just put a mound in there. Yeah. And then, like, do you put the water inside the mocha pot and then put it on the stove? They had a little cheat. What I consider a cheat is yeah. you, you heat the water first in your other container, and then you put the water in. So you put boiling water in, and mm-hmm. it, it makes it go much faster. It does. And you're not ex- ex- exposing or subjecting the mocha pot device to as much heat as long. Exactly. It's going to make your device last longer. You get better extraction. I came across an article, now that you're mentioning this, they, they did extensive testing on how to use a mocha pot. And yeah. they used like three or four temperature probes in the, pro- in the pot itself. Yeah. And they showed that if you don't preheat the water... The amount of heat that gets applied to get the water, you know, steaming, boiling, um, in fact, scolds the coffee by oh, the time it, it starts. That ex- makes sense. It was way too hot. And they found the best results were with preheated water. So you burnt it, your coffee up if you don't preheat it. So it's not just a matter of convenience. It is a, actually a matter of flavor as well. According to this article. According Which to I the article. Find again. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. That makes sense. So if we can find it, we'll throw it in the show notes. If yeah. we can't, sorry. It's you pretty good. Send your hate mail to Mike at... OrangeCactusCoffee.com. Or just try it and drink burnt coffee. Or just drink burnt at coffee. Yeah. Use your empirical evidence and try it yourself. Empirical. One of the ways to do it. Imperial that. weights. That's imperial. That's imperial? That's imperial. So. That's a catchy Made tune. the mocha. Mocha pot. Mocha. And I just tried it. I decided to treat it like. Espresso, as far as shots goes, yeah. and I try and I tried the milk Constant. frother, uh-huh. and you want either use hot milk or cold milk, and so I went to the you not know lukewarm? US, not lukewarm, yeah, not room temperature. No, it's yeah. not gonna it's not gonna froth. Really, it's not gonna froth. So Isn't that interesting. I went to the dairy 
It's you, not good for much. U.S. Lukewarm. dairy site to see how what's the best way to heat milk. Yeah, it's like you just want to throw it in the microwave, or is there you are there some pot are there the some stove. techniques yeah. there? And so I just put it in a con, in a separate container, glass Pyrex, and I throw that in the microwave. I heat, they recommend you heat 50, every fifteen seconds. You stir. Yeah, to keep the milk. I don't yeah. know. Good. Consistently, consistently heated, heated. Maybe. So I've now I've graduated to the thirty seconds. So thirty seconds stir, check the heat. Thirty seconds stir, check the heat. Thirty seconds stir, check the heat. Because you don't want to be playing around with this, the milk. this. Right, you don't want to cook it. And this hand frother, you don't want to be sending boiling milk everywhere because you're going to make a bit of a mess. It's a little bit of a mess, but it's cool. So I tried the cortado, okay, two to one ratio. I'm sorry, yeah, two to one, two to one, two to one, yeah. three to one. No, no, Anyhow, one to one, one to one. One to one. I think Pretty I tried much, yeah. two shots, uh, variance, two ounces yeah. of espresso, two ounces of milk, yeah. and it was good. It was good. So I said, you know what? I'm going to try something a little better. I'm going to try something a little different. So I went back to the store and I found and I bought mugs that looked like they would hold a mocha, mm, like a little ate, wider, a little wider. Yeah. So not as tall and not as big. More so of a cappuccino style. More of a cappuccino style. Yeah. Thank you. Cappuccino. So I brought those mugs back, and it's perfect. I put a tablespoon of chocolate syrup. I put two shots of espresso, or it's mocha pot coffee. It's just stronger coffee. Uh-huh, sure. And then I fill up the rest with milk, and I throw a little whipped cream on the top, and I thought it was great. I thought it turned out wonderful, and I made that for the moms. I had to make four of those on Mother's Day because my wife is here. Nice. My mom was here and her two sisters were here with us. Yeah. So I had to go four deep, four deep on the mocha that morning. It's yeah. good practice. I you made, made me one today. I made made Mike one I today. That was quite good. Yeah. 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 I think I got distracted though while I was making the mocha pot and I no, you did. too much water. Uh, it was a little watered down. The coffee was just a little watered down. Yeah, I would have liked it a little stronger. I think that's the key if you're trying to mimic espresso is to have a strong, you know, strong coffee. I don't I haven't messed around with the ratios and the water. I don't have it down to an exact science yet. It's more kind of a you're looking at it as the coffee boils out, bubbles out, and as soon as it starts. Stumptown recommended as soon as it starts getting a honey colored flavor, yeah. which means it's just it's water, more water than coffee yeah, coming yeah. out, you remove it from the heat and then you try and cool it to stop the extraction, to keep it from bubbling. So you pour, you put it under, you take the device and you put cold water on the oh. device on the bottom where the, the hot water chamber. is, yeah. the chamber, you cool the chamber, you quickly cool it. Stop they said it. you can do that or you can take a, a cold cloth. It's like a, a wet towel and put it around it yeah. to stop it. I so see. it's uh, and, and it worked out very well and it was cool and I feel cool doing it. I don't know if that gives me any added points or anything, but but I was no, like, this is it's cool experience. It's I was enjoying. It's fun to make. I mean, the mocha pot, especially that one, which I don't know if did, you might have mentioned. It's the, the bialetti. The bialetti. Yeah, the bialetti is one of the most popular. I think that's one of the ways that coffee's made all over the world. In, in different, you know, different recipes, different styles, but nonetheless, simple, you know, heat up water, press it through the grounds, and out comes, you know, a concentrated cup, or you can dilute it down. You can do many different things with it. But that's what's fun. It's fun learning, yeah. and it's fun tasting something different. Yeah. Because different brew methods, even if you use the same ratios, give you different properties. Yeah. And that's using a metal screen or a metal, um, yeah, I guess you call it a screen, yeah. perforated plate that two filters. Of them. Yeah, yeah. Two, two of them. That kind of keeps it. So you get some more oils and, uh, you know, more like an espresso. And I got to tell you, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but the mochas that I made today, I thought were better than what we've had, than we've recently had. And I've spent good money for. So for 50 bucks, 60 bucks, if you add the mugs in there and the milk Mm -hmm. and the whipped cream, I'm getting a better result than going out. Yeah. I thought it tasted better than Starbucks, and I thought it tasted better, which isn't real challenge, not real tough, but, and I thought it was better than the Hava Java for sure. Yeah, it is. And uh, it just, they can make it at home. I think a good mocha is just that balance of you want a nice coffee base, and you want a little taste of that chocolate, a little little sweet. Yeah. You know, and then a nice mouthfeel with the cream. Yeah. It's just, it's just the right amount of all of those. Yeah. And I think it's so easy. To just kind of compensate bad coffee, bad espresso with more, more chocolate, more chocolate, more, more sweet, milk. more yeah. milk, and pretty soon it just leads down this path of, 
okay, well, let's make this a little sweeter. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And your tolerance to sweet kind of goes up, so you need it even sweeter and sweeter. And it's end up too realizing, much. like, what, am, what is it? It's, it's too, too much. much. It's too much. It's so too much. I so. thought what you made was excellent, too. Thank you. And it was eight ounces, which was perfect. Yeah. Which is actually quite small. I mean, you, 12 is kind of... Right, a the standard. Tall, yeah. Right? 12 is a tall, 16 is that's a grande, a, yeah. and 20 is a vent, venti. Yeah. So that's kind of the standard there. It is. And eight was small, but it's more satisfying in my mind. It is. It's like the filet. Yeah. Just a little bit. A little yeah. something deliciousness here. A, a small portion of deliciousness. So I think that's an extra, an extralent. Extralent. Extra. Yeah. I think that's excellent as well. It's an excellent. Yeah. I was going to say extra and interesting or excellent. Extra and excellent. I think it's extra interesting and excellent that... All together. I wish I... I have no idea where you're going, though, so well, you got to finish that sentence, buddy. <laughs> it, it, we, have, we have a desire, and many of you do, to get, like, top-of-the-line espresso machine. Yes. Five grand, four grand. Yes. Right? Yes. Get a $1,000 yes. grinder. I want a Slayer in the house. But you I don't know, want just the Slayer. I want the Mod Bar in the house as well. Exactly. And I don't want just Mod Bar. I want the, you know, a rocket in the house as well. But it's this pursuit that to get the best espresso and the best mixed drinks, we need the best equipment, which I, I don't doubt that you will get a, a better drink if used properly. Sure. But here you are, 50 bucks. It's not trip the end to all, Bed, be Bath all. & Beyond. Mm -hmm. Down to your local grocery store, chocolate syrup, regular whole milk, you know, whatever you like, um, and you can have... A wonderful drink, and uh, you're, you're coming in maybe at 55, 60 bucks. Yeah. You know, that's for the initial. And then from there on out, you're much cheaper than yep. even your local second wave shop. Yep. And it's better. Yeah. And if you got a buddy that is roasting his own coffee, like I do, I have a buddy that's roasting coffee, you just, your coffees. Or just get locally free roasted. as well. Find your local roaster. <laughs> yeah. Or exactly. roast it yourself. Or yeah. roast it yourself. A lot of you guys are roasted at home. Which that reminds me. I was going to recommend something. This is a little different. I know we're... Is it a brew tip of the week or a roast tip no, of the week? No, it's a roast tip suggestion. Should we have a roast tip of the week in addition to the brew tip of the week? Oh, I don't Could know. Could you come up with one? I don't know. I don't think I, so. I, I don't know. But this is, this is something that the Ghostly Roaster shared with us. Come on, ghost. That I thought was really cool. Come on, ghost. Um, it was this little device, I'm trying to pull it up here, sorry, that you could um, roast right over an open flame or right over your stove. That's cool. And, you know, it was just for, you're not controlling curves, you're not measuring anything, you're just throwing in like 100 grams, and basically you, you just shake it. You shake it over the heat, you keep it moving, five to six minutes, you know, is the average roast time, I think it said. And what was cool, it was like, picture a pot. Like, you know, just a regular pot with a handle, but the handle was hollow. It was, it was like a, a hollow um, that had like an air chamber into the pot. So they were roasting it. They would shake it over the fire, and then they would blow through the hole, which would blow the chaff out the top. So they would roast a couple minutes, blow the chaff out, roast it, blow the chaff out. And then when it was done, you know, to your desired degree, you poured it out the handle. Because, you know, the handle was a hollow chamber. That's cool. And it was cool. And you have fresh roasted coffee. And, and so I thought it would be something to play around with or at least take, like, camping. How cool would that be? Roast your, roast roast, your own coffee? Yeah, right, when you're camping. Brew Just, your own coffee? It's all about the experience. Is it going to be the most flavorful? Probably not. Probably not. Most sweet? No. But is it going to be fun? Yeah. Absolutely. Sounds like it. Sounds like it. And I think, really, it's the experience is, is kind of what you're after there, like you, like you said. And that got me thinking as I was making these little mochas that... What about making your own whipped cream as well? Mm. That's what I was thinking as I was frothing by hand the milk. And I was like, well, what about whipped cream? So the miss, she's like, well, that's easy. It's just heavy whipping cream and sugar. And that makes whipped cream. Because I was it. like, I got I to gotta try this. I don't know how to do it, but I want to try whipping my own whipped cream. Maybe I could use the exact same device. I don't know. Maybe I need two of them. Or maybe I just need a bowl and a whisk. So the missus goes to Trader Joe's for me. And she picks up small packages of whipped cream for me to start experiment, experimenting with. Experimenting. 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 We're, we're both... Experimenting. Making it happen. So then as, <laughs> as, I'm, as she's picking this up for me to experiment with, she finds this coffee syrup. Nice. About 30 shows ago. All natural? I don't know what it is, but about 30 shows ago, maybe, um, I talked about my trip to... Satellite coffee. 
in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Mm-hmm. And they have a drink called the Black Velvet. Yeah. And it's an awesome drink. And I'll, I, Is it like a latte? No, it's an iced drink. It's like a, um, mm. it's an iced coffee. Yeah, frappe. No, 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 no. Like ice, on ice. Oh. It's like espresso, condensed milk. Yeah. And this, this, this coffee this syrup. Syrup over ice. Over ice. And it's incredible. And so she found this coffee syrup, and it's hard to come by. I mean, I've never seen any other stores or shops serve this particular drink. Does it say black velvet? It's called a black velvet. That's yeah. what they call it. Yeah. It's awesome. Hmm. So the, the coffee syrup is not that. And in fact, they showed me what they use. It's just called espresso syrup. Yeah. And they told me they got it from someplace in California. I took a picture. I've got it. But... I'd never seen it for sale. No. And so the missus found coffee syrup at Trader Joe's. We're going to try it. Nice. See if we can duplicate. Now we've got the mocha pot. So we've got espresso. You know, maybe a little condensed milk. Sure. A little espresso syrup. Some ice. See what we can do. See if maybe we can make a black velvet at home as yeah. well. Let us know how that goes. I'm going to keep you up to date. I'm going to keep you up to date. I'm going to experiment with it. So coffee syrup from Trader Joe's. Who to, who'd have thunk? I don't know. It's out there, though. I'm sure you, if you use it right, it can be excellent. It's like you start with a good coffee and go from there. Start with a good coffee and accentuate it. Yeah. Accentuate it. I found it real quickly. It's called Zen Roast. Zen Roast. Made in Japan. Isn't that cool? The yeah. ceramic coffee roast. That's very cool. So maybe you can throw you that in people, the show notes. Do you think people want to have their coffee roasted? Like we've talked in the past about the ideal cafe that Mike and I are working towards with this go taste experience, this three part session, sectional, three parts, multi multi, experience, multi experiential, interaction, multifaceted. If you're in a rush, there's a to go side. We call it go. Go. If you're, if you, you're here to hang out, you come to taste. taste if yeah. you want a table, there's tables. If you want to sit at the bar, there's a bar. Like a real bar, like an alcohol bar. Coffee bar. Only it's coffee bar. Mod bar. Mod bar. Oh, I love mod bar. <laughs> mod bar. Getting me all pumped up. Oh, that's so cool. But if you want an experience, you can go sit and get coffee Benihana style where the everything is prepared right in front of you. Yeah, that's the idea. I don't, I don't know exactly how that's going to work out, nope. but... We're we're thinking. We're thinking out loud here with you. We're not the only ones thinking about this as well. No. There's there's some some other folks that are thinking about having this awesome three pronged coffee experience slapping you in the face as well. But you think roasting the you know, the coffee right in front of them with that device? I just don't know if people want chaff blowing all over them. You know, you're blowing through the thing. It's yeah. part of the experience, bro. Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> I, well, I think you could pick a coffee that's less chaffy. Um, I think you would, you could do that for like a cortado or a mocha, like something where you're going a little darker where the, you know. Well, I wouldn't serve that coffee. I think you could still do it. You I, wouldn't make a mixed drink out of it? No. Oh, okay. No, because I think ultimately, even though it's an experience, I still want them to walk away saying that was good. And But if it, the experience is part of it, like you're, you're going to sit, you're going to drink that coffee and you're going to drink other coffees. And that would be okay. I think... It's just one of the yeah. many coffees that you yeah. serve. I think the, the cool part about that is if you can roast something right in front of them and then let it cool, serve them something else, you know, and then come back to it and say, okay, now you're going to try coffee that was just roasted. And, and you, the whole point is, right, the barista's there talking you through a little bit about yeah. what you're experiencing because most people have not tried coffee right after it's roasted. Right. Most would recommend not doing it because the flavors are so different and, and you get so much right. craziness going on. But that's part of the experience. Yeah. They're Here, gonna they're gonna leave on the coffee high. This. And I guarantee you, I bet you some people will like it. Yeah. They'll think it's enjoyable and they'll find, you know They'll find it cute or quaint or yeah. something. Yeah. But I think yeah, I would go with you there. If you're serving other things to say, yes. you know, here's you're gonna experience some amazing flavors with this. Here you're just gonna experience the roasting oh, and trying. I want a flight of multiple coffees. Yeah, that's cool. In smaller amounts. So like a hundred grams. Uh I, I remember I went to um a food place. It was called Tengu. It was in California. Tengu. And I went for the name because... You like the name? There's a there's a long story there. I can't talk about it right now because it would just take us so far off. All right, good. But um, it was called Tengu and it was right outside the UCLA campus. Okay. And I used to drive past this area on my way to work occasionally when I, when I was a cop in West Hollywood. So this restaurant 
had sushi and other Japanese, mm. uh, Asian fusion, Cuisine. Cali. I think it, they they called it Cal Asian fusion. I see, and it was very good. They had a DJ in there. It was it was a great little spot. But that was the first time that I had a flight of sake. Mm. And I, ha- I don't think I've had a flight of sake since. I don't think I've ever had one. But it was recommended by, you know, the people there. And I just trust, I said, what, you know, uh, sometimes I think, if you go to a fancy place and it was kind of a fancy joint, yeah. we dressed up to go, it was a date night. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know. Sometimes I just want them to, yeah. to walk me through the experience. Yeah. And I'm exactly. not a big, you don't know what to order. Spice. I'm not a big sake drinker. What do you drinker? recommend? But they had this flight of sake, and it was awesome. And it wasn't a whole lot of alcohol. It was small amounts, but a whole bunch of variety for different meals, Taste, yeah. different tastes, different That's cool. portions of your um, dishes. You know what I mean? Like a drink went with a dish. Yeah, and they, they meant to complement each other. And, yes, yeah, yes, interact. Thank you, thank you. Those, yeah. that's, like those the are the words Garden, I'm looking the for. The tour of Italy. Yeah, but, you go there and you get a plate, a <laughs> little bit of everything. Can't decide, not sure. Not used to such a fancy place. <laughs> Very <laughs> get the tour of Italy. That's why the tour. <laughs> Very similar. That's what Very I, similar to going to Olive Garden. That's my comparison. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. So I want kind of the same thing. A flight of coffees. You get a, a blueberries to the face. Yeah. Where you can really taste it. Yeah. You know, a naturally processed Ethiopian. Yeah, yeah. Maybe That'd something be cool. Kind of a lemon zinger. Maybe some like a real clean. Uh, Colum- washed Colombian or something along mm-hmm. those lines. Yeah. And then maybe like a savory Kenyan or something. Kind yeah. of like like a tomato tomato bisque soup in a cup. Yeah. To where you just get and like, oh, you know, if you don't like that flavor, you know, you don't have to drink all of it. Yeah. But when well, it's not that much. And either. it's not that much. Yeah. yeah. And you can even have a nice geisha with nice floral, like just it, a it, crazy uh, floral flowers tea. to the face. Yeah. I like that. So if you have those four coffees and then you have maybe a cortado or a mocha, something milk based, something mm-hmm. something like that to kind of finish off with dessert. Yeah. And then maybe you have like little smaller amounts of pastries or cookies to go with yeah. that, just to have in between and interact with it, or even pair it up. Pair it up. That's, That's so what cool. I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. And then at the end, you have. Remember that coffee we roasted? Let's try some of this. Yeah. Exactly. And then you can like prepare each flight. Is prepare is a different preparation. Yeah, a little different. Maybe a little different, different cup. Different, different. Maybe we do an aero different plating, press. Different. Yeah, maybe yeah. we're going to do an aero press for this one. We're going to do a V60 for this one. We're going to do a Kalita for this one, That's or a cool. blue bottle for this one, or something along those lines. I want to go to a place like that. Doesn't that sound fun? I would love to sit down. That's what I want to do. Yeah, That's, I love making coffee. I love making coffee for people. I love sitting down and talking about it, and I love engaging with other human beings over coffee. Yeah, that's so. cool. And even the espresso, I mean, you could just simply, if you have good coffee, right, especially good um, espresso, you could even serve a shot of espresso, which most people, would, especially, you know, we're, in our demographic, our region, a lot of people are turned off. They just, ah, it's bitter. I don't yeah. like it. It's too strong. Yeah. They haven't had a good shot of espresso. Yeah. So you could serve that and a cortado and things that they've never experienced because they're so used to the the milk laden, the sweet laden, yeah. you know, just yeah. the... Like I had that flight down at Cartel. Yeah. You you get a shot of espresso and a demitasse. Yeah. You get a small glass of sparkling water mm-hmm. and you get a, a cortado. Yeah. It was excellent. One, two, three. Yeah. Boom. It was. Boom. So I think that I think there's something there. I think it's a lot of work. One of the things the, that the planning, figuring out how what are you going to serve, how are you going to serve it, yeah. how are you going to perform the coffee because there is a performance involved as well. Like Absolutely. when you go to the Benihana, dudes are right, they're dancing and they're doing their thing the with the knives. There's you an experience, are a connection to the experience. Yes, yes. You're and the then vehicle. what do you charge? How do you charge? Flat rate. That, that's what yeah. I was thinking, just flat rate. 25 bucks, here's what you get. Whatever. Yes. And $25 a person. You know. Oh, you 25 Oh, okay. I don't know. For two. I'm not saying, I'm just throwing out just yeah. along that. It, this, this is two flights, you know, 25, 30 bucks, whatever. And it is an experience. And then you, you'll be back and you'll bring more friends. Yeah. Hey, we yeah. got to go check this out. You know what I mean? Um, it makes me think, too. We've talked off, off air a little bit about an interview on the Coffee is Me podcast. Coffee is Me. Um, that had, um, I think it's Gwilym, Gwilym we do, Davies. We, all we do is mess people's names up. Uh, yeah. That's all we do. Apologize, Mr. Davies. Um, he was talking in that podcast about what he would do for a new shop. 
And it was very similar to what we've been discussing for a long time. And I just heard this recently. And it's not an entirely new concept. Not our idea. We're, we're yeah. not saying we created it, but I think we're trying to take it farther. Right. And we're trying to, we would love to implement it. And it is which confirmation. Is ideas that- are. It's confirmation that we're, that we're on the right track. Other people have similar thoughts. Yeah. Yes. Because yes. I think it's a good gateway to take people from, I just need my cup quickly to, wait, there's more? Right. You, I can experience and more? And you, you have to execute on it. That's where yeah. you were going there. Ideas are great. Everybody's yeah. got ideas. Yeah. You've got great ideas, but we need to execute Some, you those You got to put it into practice. We got to execute on them. Yeah, absolutely. And what is that going to take? So in this interview, yeah. though, I just want to highlight one thing. He said the biggest challenge with this style coffee shop with multi-experience is you have to be staffed and trained. You yeah. have to have the right people. And you he's, have to have enough people. And he's absolutely right because... It can't be like Royal you one, can't do one it barista. All. Yeah. You know, the passionate owner can't do it all. Yeah. You have to have passionate people working for you. You certainly can't build the business at the same time. I've been struggling to keep it, keeping up with the Daily Ristretto and getting the podcasts yeah, done. it's a lot of work. And I know you're busy doing the Instagram posts and we're, the we're both on Facebook and you're yeah. doing the videos and, and, the roasting. and of course you have to show up and podcast as well. And the roasting is very time consuming. And the roasting is time consuming. I mean, we're trying to dial in this Costa Rica. So you're absolutely right. And, and I think one of the books that I'd made mention before, it was by Monahan called Espresso. Let's see it. He it makes, yeah, give me two seconds here. <sighs> It's by Joe Monahan and Julie Sheldon Huffaker, Espresso, Starting and Running Your Own Specialty Coffee Business. Now, this book, so you know, it is from the late 90s, kind of early 2000s. There are no websites in here. That's how you kind of know when this book was, was from and how long I've been thinking about running and starting a coffee shop. It's been a long time marinating. Yeah. I did, and like Mikey just said, ideas are a dime a dozen. Who can execute? So now we're trying to execute on these ideas. But in there, he says, Joe says, you cannot run your coffee bar and build your business at the yeah. same time. It is not possible. Now, if that's all you want, if all you want to do is run a little mom and pop coffee stop, God bless you. You can do that. But he says, but you cannot grow your business and work the bar all day. No. And so I was thinking, I don't know if I said this on the air last week, but Mike and I were talking. I said, Mike, I don't know if we can be our first employees. Yeah. I just don't know if that makes sense. We just have such big vision and things we want to do. Yeah. How do you position yourself to accomplish those? You, you have to keep time for building your business, for yeah. running the business, yeah. not just executing pouring coffee and whatnot. Yeah. So that, which is kind of what excites me. I like the idea of serving coffee. I really enjoy it. Yeah. I enjoy serving people coffee that come to my house. I try to get anybody yeah. that walks through those doors to take a cup well, of coffee. Well, that's what it's me. about, right? It's about yeah. that interaction. That's the whole point. It comes down to providing an experience um, and, and the customer that comes in, you want to serve them. Yeah. You want them to be happy. You want them to enjoy. And, and so I don't know if you have to start necessarily day one with um, 20 em employees. employees hired, but you have to start knowing that, okay, even though I'm serving today, we're already making steps to get someone in here and trained and, you know, either yeah. a, as a partner to buy into the vision, you find those people that are excited about it. So you already have your transition in place. Yeah. I don't think, it, to me, if you walk into it with thinking, you know, I'll come up with that plan later. Let's Eventually. just work. Exactly. Eventually. Let's just get this going. It's I never going to happen. you're going to lock yourself in pretty quickly and be stuck. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be harder. But if you come in day one, I'm saying you could hire people, but you're going to be there too. You have to be. Yeah. I was listening to a podcast with Johnny Earl, whom you may know as the owner of Johnny Cupcakes. Mm -hmm. You know I've got a brand crush on Johnny Cupcakes. A little bit. A little, a little bit, bit of a brand crush on Johnny Cupcakes. He was saying that he his day is, he, he shows up at the shops. He shows in, he shows up and he works. He's, he, he works the warehouse. Does he, he really? He yeah. bounces around. It's never set in stone what he's going to do. He, give, he, go, he travels, he gives speeches. He'll do things like that. And when he shows up, at the at the shop, he never says, "Hey, I'm Johnny. I'm the owner." He just 
He yeah. he says he talks about Johnny Earl in the third person, and he just works the shop. Yeah, he just shows it's up like undercover boss. He just shows up working. Yeah. yeah. Working. How can I add value? Where can I Who where can I help guy? out? And when I have a speaking engagement, you know, he goes to the speaking engagement. Yeah. He does those a couple times a month. And then, you know, he runs the warehouse, he signs things, he puts stuff in, gifts in. They put strange gifts in sometimes their packages before they send them out. Like he said, they they'll put a doll's head. Nice. In there. Just kind of weird. Yeah. I, I'd like to put I don't know. It's more of I think in that I want to put little gifts in there, little yeah. things that would you know be helpful to you. In our, I packages. think that is nice. I was reminded, and I think we've mentioned this previously, going way back. Something I ordered a long time ago, or my wife got it for me for Christmas. I don't remember. I think it was like a coffee mug. Um, it's was like it Mojo. Bi- was it the Bitcoin mug? No, it was no. the mug. I have a mug that looks like a Canon seventy two hundred. L lens. Oh yeah, it's, it's like very a, cool. It's cool. It looks like on the outside you would think it's a lens. It does look like a, a lens. It's a coffee mug. Yeah. Um, I want to say it was like Mojo Go or Mojo to Go. Mojo was like the the company that created it. Yeah. But inside that package was a tiny little T Rex with a note that said, "Here, have a T Rex." That's a C. <laughs> and and I so I mean it's so random, but it's you just, remember it. Yeah, it's random and it's and that fun. was she's like she yeah. was reminding me. I'm like this is weird. She's like yeah, but. It's but just it's fun. fun. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. Like here, have a T Rex. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, All right, great. See, see that, to, and that excites me as well. That's one of the reasons why I don't want to give up the packaging and the shipping to Printful. You know, if like, but without them, I don't know if I. You know, how else do you come up with the money to buy the shirts and to sell them and to get the boxes and all that? You have to buy in bulk first. Yeah. If you outsource it to a drop shipper. Mm-hmm. They can do it for you. They'll put your branding on. They'll put your stickers yeah, yeah. and things on but it. They ain't putting T Rexes in. But there. they're not putting your heart into it. Now they put their heart into it, which is great. I think they're a good company. Yeah. And and Printful is the one that I'm thinking of using or or considering. But sure. but it's not. But I want to do that. You know what I mean? I want to run the coffee shop. I want to run the podcast. I run to write blogs. I want to run the warehouse. I want to do it all. Yeah. It's a competing notion, right? <laughs> yeah. You have. What's smart, strictly business speaking. Yeah. And then you have what excites you. Yes. And finding the balance between those two. And it's just unfortunate or, or it's just the reality of today that you can't, we can't just run off and do what excites us. Yeah. I mean. There has to be a balance. You, you, exactly. At the end of the day, you still got to manage the business. Right. Um, and understand. And I think that was another one of the advice, uh, an advice uh, piece that. Uh, Mr. Davies gave, he said, Willem? Gwilem. Gwilem. G-W-I-L-Y-M. Or G-W, yeah, Gwilem. I-L-Y-M. Gwilem. I think. Gwilem. Gwilem. He Gwilem. said, if he, what's the you know, piece of advice you'd give your young self? Realize you're also running a business. Yes, you're having fun, you're pulling shots, you're making great coffee. But you're running a business. But numbers matter. And if you don't run the business well, you're not going to be in business long. Yeah. Stop wasting milk. Stop, he said, you know, um, running so much cleaning through uh, your shot. Your espresso machine after each shot because you're heating that water, you're paying the city for that water or wherever you're getting the water. Yeah, yeah. You know, just little things add up. You know what I mean? He's like, pay attention and realize that you will. Because honestly, I think part of that, when you do turn a profit and you are successful, that's also motivation that you're doing something right or that, hey, I can sustain this and I'm having fun. Yeah. Because at the end, it turns into a nightmare. You chased your dream, you lost your savings. You weren't counting the pennies, and now you have to go back into the corporate world. Yes. Been there, done that. And now it's a nightmare. Been there, done that. It goes from the dream to the nightmare because you didn't have any... And I'm not saying that's always the case, but I think it's easy, just personally speaking. To do what's fun instead of realize that you're running a business. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The business will take care of itself. I'm just going to follow my dreams. Mm, I love that. Yep. Many, and that's the advice that I hear from a lot of them. It works for some people. Yeah. I think the younger you are, the more years you have, the less responsibilities you have, the more you can do that, yeah. the less risky it is. Sure, sure. And I think it helps to have someone involved in the business that isn't passionate about the product, but passionate about the business. Passionate there about is the value numbers. for those people yeah. that just say, hey, I, I just want to see this thing succeed. Yeah, I like coffee, but I'm not crazy. I'm not here for the coffee. In fact, I'm here to help you with the numbers. Yeah. You get the team man on the team to take care of the numbers. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? I think there's value in that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So transitioning into our coffee experience here, I've got two that I wanted to talk about. Two? Two coffee experiences. 
drink a lot of coffee. I drink a lot of coffee. So I go to Chick-fil-A when I go down to Phoenix for yeah. football games or whatnot. And Good place. I've had their fresh roasted coffee. Fresh roasted or fresh ground? Fresh roasted. I don't know if it was fresh ground. I doubt it, though. Got in a little Facebook was, debate I think it was. That. I think it was pre-ground for my convenience. Yeah. Good. It's not very good. They make it for you there. Fresh, freshly brewed. Okay. They made a fresh pot for me because yeah. it was at night. Yeah. And it wasn't very good. Didn't care for it. So the next time I Just had their cold brew. Oh, yeah. I put cream and sugar and still terrible. Yeah. I had their cold brew with a little bit of their vanilla sweet cream or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't very good. The following week, so this is two weeks in a row. One first week, yeah. ro- brewed coffee, coffee. Brewed coffee. Next week, cold, cold brew. brew. Third week. What else they got? I stopped at Elevate. Coca- oh. And I had my poor coffee experience at Elevate. Yeah. And I was like, this is garbage. And I really went out of my way. To come to get here there. Yeah. and spend a lot of money here. I was yeah. like, I'm not coming back. So then the following week, I went back to Chick-fil-A. Yeah. I went back to Chick-fil-A and I had their cold brew with a little cream in it because it it was yeah. cheaper. Exactly. And, I mean, it wasn't great, but it was better than the alternative going out of my way and spending money for something that I know is going to be poor. Exactly. Like it, what, I knew it wasn't going to be very good, but it didn't cost me a whole lot. Yeah. You're not like, investing much. I'm not investing much. I'm already here, and it's only a couple bucks. Yeah. And I really, I just need a little bit of caffeine to get me home because I got a long drive. Plus, it, it's it's a chick, chicken restaurant. It's a chicken restaurant. So you restaurant. don't expect the coffee to be amazing. If it's better than you expect, great. This is where I think they're going, though. Where are they going? Because they're as... following Ronnie? I think they're following Ronnie. The more Mick Cafe has success... Yeah. The more you're going to see other fast food chains Absolutely. jump in there. So we've talked in the past. I said, Ronnie's coming for you. And Ronnie is. But the problem with that is this. You think you got Ronnie. Ronnie is a trendsetter. Yeah. The rest of them are following suit. Let me tell you something. If putting Melitas and Decents and La Marzocas or whatever. Yeah. Putting espresso machines, if it's profitable for McDonald's, Wendy's is coming. Burger King is coming. Yeah. Chick-fil-A will be coming. Absolutely. If there's money to be made. If there's money to be made, they're going to come for you. They're paying attention. They're paying attention. And you're over here serving nasty mochas. Yeah. Ronnie's coming for you. You guys are in trouble. If you're you're not creating a unique experience. That's what I think. Anyhow. That's the point. That's number one. Second coffee experience. I was down at another yet another football game, different part of Phoenix. So I did a search, you know, near the stadium for coffee shops. I found one called Desert Eagle. Nice. Yeah. Was Looked it okay. a gun shop? No. Coffee shop. Coffee shop. Yeah. So I show up. Serving up shots. And it is a double drive through coffee shop kiosk okay but it's a large coffee kiosk and as i'm pulling in closer i'm getting a dutch bros vibe from it are you and then what kind of vibe is that the just laid laid back cool hanging out weird yeah. names yeah. the triple you know the nine one one the triple explosion yeah. the explorer death by chocolate they weren't know, all guns that would have been funny no they weren't all guns a double barrel and as I'm pulling up I see they have a Dietrich roaster on site what they roast on site wow so it's a roastery so it's a roastery and coffee kiosk that's it's huge it, yeah. it was a, the biggest coffee kiosk I've seen wow. They've right. got a roaster. They roast on site. They're open 24 hours. 24 hours. And I said, I asked the girl, I said, uh, how many employees do you have here at night if you guys are open 24 hours? Because they had three there in the afternoon. Yeah. And she said, well, sometimes it's just one. Yeah. And it's rough. She said, usually it's two. Sometimes it's just one. And I was like, I would not want to be the one person at 1 no. a.m. trying to pull right? shots. You need somebody else to talk to. Yeah. I mean, you your your previous vocation. You've probably spent many a nights Alone. out, yeah. And usually, the I mean, people looking for coffee at that hour. I don't know. I'd yeah. just be a little leery. Yeah. About is it really profitable? 
I don't know. Is it really profitable? I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's profitable or, or if it's every just, night. I mean, not just, just weekends. Their thing. I get okay. Weekends, people are out doing their thing. Yeah. But a Wednesday night, two in the morning. Yeah. You want to go down to Desert Eagle? Yeah. Yeah. Let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So it was. Um, That's interesting. It was interesting. So we had they had milkshakes for the kids. So it's convenient. And they had smoothies for the kids. Nice. And I wasn't going to try a hot drink. I just I wasn't going to try a shot of espresso, yeah. but I didn't I didn't see the inside of the shop yet because the gal comes out with her little handheld thing and yeah. takes your order, just like Dutch Bros, just like Dutch Bros, while yeah. you're in the drive thru yeah. And so we had a ice blended and uh, an iced coffee, with both espresso based, and they were it was it was good, it? Yeah. it was good, it was good, it was the filled. coffee taste. You could good. actually taste some coffee in there. So yeah, and it's then you, fresh. Then so. you get to the front and they've got yeah. two. Three group La Marzocca espresso oh, machines wow. up in there. Nice, and they're pulling. They're pulling shots. Yeah, they're pulling shots. So, well, that's pretty cool. That's a different model. I've never seen a dry a double you know drive up with a roastery right there. Yeah, that's like taking advantage. I think that's like uh, taking all the key things from the books. Right. Yeah. Roast your own beans. Check. Just have you know drive up. Check. Set, yeah. You know what I mean for, for speed and efficiency. Exactly. Check. Yeah. Just get them in, get them uh, out. Provide your own product. So I'm trying to take a picture of this roaster, like through the window. Through the window. Like a creep. Like a like el creep with the selfie stick. Like a creep. Are you reaching it in there? No. So I Some turn. Have the remote. I trigger. turn and I reach, and while I'm reaching, someone honks the horn. Oh, behind you! Bronk! And I'm like, oh my goodness! And then I realize it was me. It was my elbow that hit my own horn. <laughs> oh, man. And so the gal, she's helping the people in front of us. They all look back at me. And I'm like, sorry. And the missus is like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You are the jerk saying hurry it up. <laughs> I know. I was like, what yeah. jerk is telling me to go? There's nobody behind. <laughs> oh, it was me. Oh, it was that's me. That's good stuff. Good on, stuff. On that bombshell, that's it. That's it. We don't have, uh, what about Mr. Mr. G? Oh, we can't skip. We well, got 45 something. minutes. We'll, we'll throw know. it in at the end. We have something. Okay, Manny G. Manny G recommends. Manny G recommends. Manny G recommends the perfect daily grind. Yeah. So it's perfectdailygrind.com. It is one of the best blogs for coffee on the internets. And right now, they've got awesome articles how to pull a good shot at home, yeah. how does altitude affect coffee and its taste in the cup, one understands Korea's coffee boom, look to latte art, how to cup cascara, Tim Wendelbo, six ways to improve your coffee roasting, what's an AASL28, get to know your Kenyan coffees, how to select the stuff. best milk for coffee, foam and latte really is a art, great resource. why Myanmar is specialty coffee's golden child. There's so much there. Yeah. There really is. That if you're not onto it, you should be. Yeah, you you absolutely should be. And one of the things I would recommend, sign up for their newsletter. And I usually don't always like newsletters. I don't give out the email. But what's nice is they come out with so much content and so many good articles that they'll send you like a recap and say, hey, here's what we've hit. And I like that. I like seeing it all in one place and I can pick, you know, if I'm wanting more info on roasting. Boom, yeah. here's the roasting articles and I dive in. Uh, so check them out. What I didn't like, if there's one drawback to perfectdailygrind.com, is that there's no comments on the articles. I did notice that. I like... A little dialogue. I like a little dialogue. Sure. Back yeah. and forth. Yeah. If I'm going to read the article and it's great, I want to let you know. Hmm. If I want to read the article and I disagree, sometimes I want to let you know. Sure. So I, I do like the comments, but Manny G is absolutely correct. It is an awesome blog. It is check worth your out. time. Yep. Check them out. And we will check you out next time. Next time. All right. Bye. Felicia. Thank you so much for listening. As always, you can find the show notes at orangecactuscoffee.com forward slash episode five one. It's an honor to be here with you. It's an honor to be in your ear. Thank you so much for listening and we'll catch you next time.